to TNTV, but what's the book better? We're back with my um, library pals. I'm Georgina Lewis, your favorite librarian in training. I'm Leah Holloway, I'm the public relations assistant. And I'm USA Today best-selling author Olivia Gaines, and we're ready to talk about Lovecraft Country, Episode 9, Rewind to 1921. I don't know about you guys, but this one kind of left me traumatized. We're going to crack open the spine, yank Montrose out of the closet, and we're going to go through some of these traumatic events, because I know I was tra tra traumatized. What about you guys? Yeah, definitely. Um I think it was good for us to see what made Montrose the man that he is now. But uh, between the fire and Montrose and everything, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely hit home. You definitely saw that um, intergenerational trauma strike in this episode. And you, you definitely saw where all of Montrose's anger and everything that, you know, he's, you know, projected onto Tick has come from. Um, I think the worst part was, you know, when they're at the fountain, or excuse me, the statue, and he's with yes. his friend, yes. Yes. and that's where he ends up telling the friend, you know, I can't hang out with, oh, yes, he called his friend an inappropriate word, and, um, you know, those were his last moments with this friend, and that, Thomas. that was also, yeah, Thomas okay. was his name, mm -hmm. and that also brought on some trauma, and it brought on a moment where he wanted to save Thomas, and Tick said, you can't save Thomas because it might change everything, it might change everything that's happening. And then he talked about taking all of the soft pieces of himself to be a man. And there are so many that go through that struggle. And I felt like that was very important to cover. And I'm glad that the creator did in that episode. But so much happened. And it brought on just so much. Because black people in America have gone through so much. Yes. And to just see that moment, that piece of history in Tulsa reenacted. Just to see how much so many people lost. I and think this was such a small piece mm -hmm. in, in comparison to the planes coming overhead and dropping things. Oh, yeah. And there are even people who live in Tulsa now, until they saw Watchmen, they never knew that it happened because a lot mm -hmm. of that whole Black Wall Street has been erased from uh, history, history. Yep. as if it never happened. But from a storyteller's perspective, we get into what is called imagery. And there are so so much, there's so much imagery in this, from seeing Montrose hold the bottle for his liquid courage. Um, he's going to take me back in time to relive the most, the worst moment of my life. And not only is my son going to see this, my son is going to see how my father treated me, and then how you know his mother had to come to my defense even when. It seems as if my brother George didn't come to my defense. So I, it was just, it was very powerful just watching it. And then it kind of seems like it tells a little bit more about George too because mm -hmm. Atticus, when he argued with George in one of the past episodes, he asked him, Atticus asked George, why don't you ever stand up for me? And it was funny mm -hmm. because George said, why don't you ever stand up for your brother? So it's interesting, it's like he never really stepped in for Tick whenever he was getting beat by Montrose, but he never really stepped in for Montrose either, even though Montrose says that he was actually always there for him the most, which was kind of interesting to me because I'm just like, well, he's not here for you now, he wasn't really there for Tick, right. because that's how Tick feels, so. I thought that's the piece that I, I picked up on, that I feel like Montrose definitely protects George's image. And I felt like that was definitely a moment of that because, you know, he goes out of his way to say, like, you know, but but George did, you know, he was there for me and he was there for me the most. And, you know, I'm very much, you know, actions. Yeah. You know, you physically see Dora, which that's Tick's mom, you know, stand up in front of this man. And it's like all the times you think about George yeah, you, you don't really see George being like the stand up guy. You the stand up type of guy. He's definitely more of like, oh, I'm gonna help you after everything has happened. Do you want some water? Do you want a blanket? That that's very much kind of how George feels. And it, I just thought it was interesting that he. That's how much Montrose really cares. I feel like those are the soft moments. Those are the soft pieces that you get to see from Montrose. Like he does. I can say a lot of things about Montrose. He's definitely not. 
he's flawed. Just like a lot of people. That's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, but I won't go so far as to call him bad. Just because, like, at the heart of it, he does do what he thinks is best to protect his family. He really does do that. And I feel like that's what we've seen more of as we've gone through the show. I'm, 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 we kind of touched on it before about Dora's relationship with Montrose. And I'm just wondering if it was one of those situations where he had just been beat and broken almost to the point that he was broken. And she was like, well, come on, baby. And she started hugging him, and then it led to something else. And I'm mm. just kind of wondering if that was the yeah. case. I'm pretty sure we're probably not going to find out in this season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't see that happening. But I think of Dora as Montrose's best friend. Yeah. I, I quite literally think of her as a best She's the one that's, you know, like you said, She's the one who's going to pick up the pieces. Right. She's the one who's going to stand in the middle of something happening. She's not just going to sit there and let anything happen to him. She actively and passively cared, of, cared or cares about Montrose. You know, and I feel like to him that was his best friend. Like, Do we know how she died? Dora? Mm-hmm. Um, no. We don't know how she died. I'm trying to remember in the book because I don't think she really had a huge role in the book. Mm. Like, I feel like she might have died, like, in childbirth or something like that, and, like, Montrose always resents a tick or something like that. But that's, like, the book. I don't know how she died in the series. I don't think they've ever said. But I also wanted to touch on Tulsa in the book. So Tulsa is mentioned in, I can't remember which chapter it is, but it's mentioned briefly. But not Mm. in such detail as this episode in the show. And it's interesting because the way, of course, Montrose is not gay in the book. But his father is very hard on him. And yes, abusive. So it was interesting because in the book, spoilers, spoiler alerts if you haven't read the book, uh, Montrose wants to go out into the uh, Tulsa Massacre and he wants to help. He wants to help the fight. Okay. And his father goes out to look for him. And his he almost dies, and his father actually saves him. And while his father is carrying him home, once he gets home, his father actually drops down dead because he got shot. So his father actually saved him. Okay, more trauma. Yes, more more trauma. trauma. So he has to live with the fact that in Tulsa, it's his fault that he went out Um, to try and fight, and he got his father killed. Even it though. makes sense now with yeah. the Thomas part aspect of that because mm-hmm. the whole aspect of of Thomas is that he never even could remember he mentioned he, Montrose said he couldn't even say Thomas's name until they were there in the past mm-hmm. he hasn't spoken you know this right. boy's name since then and that it was his fault like so I can see where they she where they came up with that okay. that, was, that was really smart I like that. And also, the scene at the end where Matros is staring out the window looking at Letty coming through the fire, and he starts naming, like, all these prominent black Americans that died in Tulsa. I know he said the name of a doctor, and he just said all these names, and, you know, it just got you feeling like, wow, like, all these people that could have made such a mark on the world were taken taken away. In one night, Mm -hmm. uh, a whole culture of self-sustaining because from my understanding of what I've read about Black Wall Street is that the dollar turned over five to six times mm. in a day. Yeah. You know, so they were a very self-sustaining community. But the whole episode left us all in our feelings. Um, Ruby. It's your fault. It's your fault. What was you doing? What? Why weren't you watching me? I'm sorry. That was funny to me. I was like, yes, yeah, all y'all's fault. Worst, yes. worst watchers ever. <laughs> you cannot babysit my kids. <laughs> You're this fired. <laughs> episode for me, we one of the things I'm always bringing up is tick selfishness. Oh I'm always bringing it up. Yes. But this yes. episode, by far, highlighted the selfishness in each and every character. No character was not like exactly. their extremely selfish self in this episode. Everything had a very centered self moment I would say for each one 
Dig into that a little bit. Dig into that a little bit. So, um, let me just jump around. So, we just go ahead and jump on Tick, my favorite person to jump on. Give me that <laughs> did anyone? Did anyone kind of chuckle at that part? It was really sad. Where my I, had the photo and it's just like, I just want to say my mom, my dad. Tick. Like, give me that picture. Yeah. I wanted to <laughs> lay hands upon Tick <laughs> on one particular part with Mantra. So, when someone is having trauma, PTSD, any of those things, uh, they show lots of physical signs mm-hmm. of that. Mm-hmm. And Dick isn't even in tuned enough to realize like how much trauma this was so flooding hard. back into Montrose. Right. How much it took for Montrose to jump back into the past. And he is standing there. Montrose is just standing there like, okay. You know, like, I'm here, I'm, I'm, I'm here, and everything's going back. And what does Tick equate that to? Drinking. Drunk yeah, drink it. Get on your Right. Drop. And I'm just like, you don't know what trauma looks like? Considering you've been to war? Right. Okay. And it was just the absolute wrong response. It was awful, and I... I don't like Tick. Anyway. <laughs> maybe, we'll go maybe, on to Ruby because I don't Ruby. like Ruby. I just want to say, maybe Tick doesn't know how to deal with that trauma, though, because he's still going through his own trauma from war. Dealing with it and seeing it in others is different for me, for me as someone who's watching it as a viewer. Because you can have your own demons that you're dealing mm-hmm. with, but he doesn't even have enough compassion to like at least be like, are you okay? Yeah. But isn't, isn't it that point in a relationship, like if you've been with this guy for eight or nine years and it's payday and he comes home and he's broke again and you're just at the point of why can't you just bring the paycheck home? Why mm. do we have to go through this every single time? There is a level in a relationship where you just like, I'm over this. I yeah. just need you to, to step up and handle. We're all out of our element here. I just need you to do your part. And I, I see I see some of the things that you're saying, because as much as Tick irritates you, Ruby irritates me in the <laughs> same way. Because oh, yeah. she just automatically, well, we need help. I'm going to go get Christina. And it's like, really? I'm going to go get my boo. We can trust gonna fix Christina. It. We can trust everything she says. Okay, girl. Like. That's her boo. Like, like, my boo gonna fix everything. Yeah. My boo got magic and everything. She got money. She mm. <laughs> oh my gosh. There is something that was funny that's from the book that I that I wanted to say about Christina, but I know we're going to Ruby next. Well, Ruby and Christina are kind of like, <laughs> they together, well, they're together, pretty they're much. Together. This, this was literally something super small, but towards the end of their conversation when she said, I always wanted to be a redhead. I don't know if you remember when we were talking about the, I think it was episode five, we were talking about when she actually, it was the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde episode. And I said in the book, she's actually a redhead. Okay. Okay. And I picked so up I on like, that. I was like, okay, so she's about to be like how the book described her. Okay. I picked up on that. I was just like, ooh, okay. ooh. I was like, I was telling my friend, I was like, that is something that was brought up. Like you said, I was just like, I like how the show drops nuggets of like the book mm-hmm. and, and infuses them in the show. It definitely makes you want to read the book for sure. So I, I did pick up on that. But Ruby, um, I don't know. I feel like Ruby, something pretty bad and shocking and heartbreaking is going to happen to Ruby. Really feel that way. Just because of like how much faith She's put in this one person. Uh, Will Stina, as my friend calls her. Will Stina. <laughs> exactly what Hashtag she is. Hashtag Will Stina. <laughs> That's exactly who she is. Like, I, I just feel like it's really going to come crumbling down, and I think it's going to hurt from a deeper place for her because of that. Like, that whole, like, she's going to say everything. Then, you know, because of Letty, they don't really have anything to bother with. Because Letty's already used the papers. But now she has the entire book. Yeah. So she has a bartering tool. That's true. Yeah. Because they gave her the pages. Mm-hmm. But now they have the entire book. And the entire book hadn't been seen since 1921. 
So, mm. and my thing is, if they had the ability to go back into the past, even with her father being able to do all the things that he did, mm -hmm. why didn't they just go back before now and get the book? I feel like, and I can't remember, there was a piece in this show that kind of like touched lightly touched on, on it, okay. but I cannot remember, um, like right off the top of my head. Well, they do need it for D, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they went to get it for. So, I mean, maybe they just didn't need it before then. Now, that whole scene with them pulling the maggots out of her arms, and uh, that just, my skin crawled all the way up, and I felt like a Sharpe, because I felt like my skin had just crawled all the way up on top of my head. It just, yeah. it creeped me out. Because Dee was turning into, like, one of the ones, like, Topsy and Dopsy who were in there, so, like... I think she's losing that arm. I think she's the woman that handed mm -hmm. Atticus the book. I think she's going to lose the arm as well because that arm was withered. That arm was dead. Yeah. Mm. And when they cut back to the scene with her in bed. <laughs> Top Topsy in the bed. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, yeah, that was Goodness. frightening. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely frightening. And that kind of leads into, like, um, Hippolyta's selfishness um, yes. a little bit just because we're running through the different characters. So, as y'all know, Hippolyta's been gone. Her episode's fabulous. One of my, It is my favorite so far. I haven't had anything yes. that beat it. And, um, <laughs> you know, she comes back in a, in a justifiable fury. <laughs> Did anyone get scared when she came back? She Everybody was like, like. She just popped up out of nowhere and was like, what's going on? And I had like the scared mama <laughs> yes. moment. Like, oh. Right. I was like, oh, she definitely just brought my like favorite vase. She just popped up. <laughs> right. and I was like, oh my God, I'm not even in the show. And everyone was like. Chick's always doing that thing like this. <laughs> and that's literally what happened. Everyone's just... I mean, but then is like... <laughs> she is the matriarch in right. the show. She is the matriarch. She is the big mama, the mama of the show. Right. So you already know when she comes through the door and she is angry, you're just like, I ain't doing nothing. <laughs> it wasn't I've me. I've been back here. I've been right. watching y'all. Right. right. <laughs> they let D <laughs> walk around. Here. Right. I told them they to be watching D. <laughs> right. I was kind of like, no, him, I, but they let me go all around this city. washing dishes like he told me. <laughs> but then it's like, but where were you for a whole entire week? There oh, you go. I was, exactly. I was on a planet for 200 years, you know. Nothing, nothing. Earth 504. Yeah, nothing, nothing <laughs> crazy or anything. I just, I learned all this knowledge. I gained all this information. You know? Yeah. And then she's got deal. the two connectors. Right. Like battery. She's like a cyborg now. Yes. She's like, or an android. And she's just like, uh, so but, yeah, like at the end, I got yeah. the alien vibes because of mm -hmm. like the liquid. I was just like, okay, Hippolyta. Yeah, because I was just like, like I said, I was talking about it's just like you, you, you left your, your baby and you went off and explored all these amazing things, and then you come back and you're angry, and I'm just like, deep down inside, you knew. <laughs> you left her with most some of the most irresponsible. Right, you knew in your life. Right, you know all of them. Your husband ended up dead with them. Right. <laughs> Why would you, you leave trust your, kid? your husband with Why them? would you leave your kid with them? Right. Like that. Well, but. I'm still trying to understand why Tick allowed his dad, who has, you know, dyslexia, to read the spell. Yo. Yes. Yo, that part. Yes. As soon as he said that, I would have been like, that's all right, Pop. Right. I'm good. And his eyes got kind of big, too. But then he's just like, all right, let's just do it. Just like, like, you're going to okay. trust a man with dyslexia to read a spell? Yeah. I'm like, okay, so there's that. And there's just, uh, Letty, I love Letty. Letty is probably in the best physical shape of her life. You're right. Because <laughs> she yeah. runs. That little in, baby runs. every single <laughs> episode. She is wide open. And I said, I, when she started walking across the street with the flapper dress on, and the sneakers. I said the sneakers. I go, a dead giveaway. Are yeah. out of time, out of place. And I said that too. I was like, why would you still have those on? Right. Exactly. And then we know she has to run. But even the grandmother, I knew once I saw your shoes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Imagine mm -hmm. like hearing that in a house that you're gonna die. Like right then. And you can't leave because Tick won't exist and neither will her baby. Exactly. Like, that had to be the hardest thing. I definitely teared up on yeah. that part because it was, like, once the grandmother, you know, realizes, like, you know, this is probably really true, mm -hmm. and I'm going to give you this book. And, okay, now I'm going to get you up, but I'm going to give you this book. 
and you literally can't change anything. I think that would be the toughest part about going back is you can't change anything. That was what's tougher for everybody, but she's literally holding her hand. Yeah. And you know, she's saying that this is for my great, great grandson. So like having enough faith that Letty is gonna, you know, go back and they're gonna fix whatever made them come here. And just blindly trusting Letty on that just because it's like the baby in her womb. Like I that my heart, that that whole moment just and when they had to separate. Yeah. Because her hand yeah. was catching on fire. Now, in theory, even though Letty's body is protected, those clothes should have burned up. But that's just me. They should have. They, they actually should have. I didn't think about that until you just brought it up. But yes. I every, did think every, about that. Everything that she had on should have burned up. Should have roasted. Yes. Especially when the plane went, came overhead and dropped the bomb on her and she's walking through the fire again. Mm -hmm. And the piece of poetry is by American poet... Uh, Sonia Sanchez and it's called Catch the Fire and you can find that uh, her reading that live uh, on YouTube. It's oh, called okay. Catch the Fire. Mm -hmm. Yes. And and they took her live reading from YouTube and they actually overlaid it into the movie. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. I say where is your fire? Can you smell it coming out of our past? Mm. I'm sorry. Mm, I love it. <laughs> I love it too and it just it was making me cry and then praying there she was just like let's pray and she was just praying with uh with uh Dora's grandma and I was like oh my gosh this mm -hmm. is just it was powerful it's, it's yeah just, and, and I felt actually I felt traumatized after I watched it because you could see Montrose trying to get his son to understand that I haven't achieved anything in life other than being your okay. father yeah that part yeah. really kind of like oof those parts together just kind of like first of all you Montrose is laid bare by this point yes yes he's laid bare as a character like there's nothing about Montrose right now that should surprise you or anything and then for him to say, basically, like, my greatest accomplishment, the thing that makes me a man, mm -hmm. is having you. Like, I, yeah, the, this was a really heavy episode. Like, and even when he confessed, you know, well, George may be your dad. I don't, I don't know if I am. And he was just like, what? But you're my son. He goes out of his way to say, but you're my son. Like, like you're yeah. mine. Yeah, I raised you. Right. Yeah. And he said he would do it all over again. He did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we have a lot of things that we hope, anticipate for for the finale. What are your thoughts? What are you thinking is going to happen? Drop us a message down below. We'll get back to you and we'll let you know what we think as well. Mm -hmm. Anything else to add, ladies? Nothing else to add. Enjoy the finale, y'all. Yep. So for um, T and TV, what's the book better? I'm USA Today best-selling author Olivia Gaines. I'm Georgina Lewis, your favorite librarian in training. And I'm Leah Holloway, the public relations assistant. Until next time. Mm -hmm.